In the last screencast, we looked at the traditional ways of dividing up the world in terms of development. We also looked at a more modern division based on wealth. However, just purely focusing on the wealth of a country does not give us a true idea of how developed it is. Because as we discussed in lesson, some places that are rich actually have areas that are poor within them. And also your poor countries, if you like, also have some people that are also wealthy. And so this screencast is looking at a range of measures of development and will interpret them what they tell us about a country and how these measures actually correlate. Now, indicators of development tell us a great deal about a country and allow us to compare them. Any development measure that tells us about wealth, poverty or economic development, like the previous uh, screencast, should correlate with similar indicators. For example, a country with low GNP per capita is likely to have most of its people surviving on subsistence agriculture with low levels of income. Money is limited to pay for education and health, so living standards for most people are low. So in other words, there's a link between wealth and other development indicators. Birth rate is closely correlated with level of development. The more developed a country, the lower its birth rate. The demographic transition model that we looked at in the population topic gives us evidence that birth rate decreases as countries become more developed. And we can see that on this map here. A country at a further stage of development is likely to have a high human development index, which we'll talk about in a minute, a low infant mortality rate, and widespread access to clean water. There are likely to be many doctors for the number of people and literacy rates will be high because the government has sufficient money to spend on health and education. Poorer governments do not have enough funds to provide higher level services. Often even the basics like clean water and living wage are not possible. So as we can see looking at this map here and thinking about our previous screencast, Africa here, also standing out like it did in the previous map for being poor, on this one, as you can see, has very high birth rate, over 40 per thousand in large numbers of the African countries. Whereas if you look at some of the more wealthier countries, right, so we were looking at Europe before, and we were looking at North America, you can see their colours are much lighter down here, so their birth rates are much lower, somewhere between 5 and maybe 14.9 in total. Now this table here shows us the range of development indicators for selected countries. So on the left hand side here you can see the different countries. We have GNI per capita, so US dollars, something we discussed in the last screencast and in the lesson. In this column we have the HDI from 2010. Now the HDI is something known as the Human Development Index, which is an index based on three variables. It looks at three different things. Life expectancy at birth, so how long those people are expected to live for the level of education that those people can have in that country, including both literacy rates and years spent in school, and then income adjusted for purchasing power, so how much it will buy. The maximum number that you could get in this column is one. So wealthy countries like Japan have an HDI of over 0.9. As you see, 0.902. It's very close to the number one. Therefore, it is a, a, a well-off country, has a high human development index, Whereas your poorer countries, right down here, Zimbabwe, 0.140, shows that it doesn't have a high human development index and is a poorer country. Birth rate, we've just discussed on the previous map. Death rate, although most countries are kind of have lowered their death rate, a high death rate does indicate a poorer country. Infant mortality rate, obviously the number of uh, children who die before the age of one um, per thousand people, the higher that number is, the poorer the country tends to be because they don't have the medical care to look after children who become ill. The number of doctors per thousand. So again, your rich countries would tend to have more doctors per thousand people. Literacy rate is the number of people who can read and write. Therefore, the higher the percentage, the more developed the country is. And percentage of population with access to clean water. Obviously, your rich countries tend to have high access to um, water, whereas other countries that are poorer don't have as much clean water. So if we just look at a few examples here, so USA, Japan, UK, what we kind of would call kind of rich countries, as you can see here the GNI is high, much higher than compared to the rest of the countries in the table. Their HDI is high, so close to 1. Their birth rates are low, but kind of fluctuate, so Japan much lower than kind of USA and the UK. The death rates are low. 
Asia laws, you say kind of often these rich countries now have slightly higher death rates due to the um, kind of food that we eat and, and things that we, we do that kind of increase the death rate. Infant mortality rate, the number of children who die, young is small, particularly in Japan. Number of doctors is around the two figure, where a lot of the other places are much lower. Literacy rates, nearly all 100% of people can read and write. And nearly 100% of people have access to clean water. Only USA has a, a 1% dip there. If you look at the poorer countries, obviously the GNI is much lower. The HDI is lower. The birth rate tends to be higher. The death rate, as you can see there, not much difference, to be honest, with higher up. Because that's something as a country develops. Remember, the death rate drops first. If you remember about the demographic transition model. The infant mortality rate, lots of children die and very young. Not many doctors, which obviously has a link to the fact that people die in young. Literacy rates. Say so here, these two countries, around 50% of the people can't read and write. Zimbabwe does have quite a high percentage. But again, lack of clean water, which links into all of these things around the number of children dying and death rates. So if we look at two of those indicators, and it's, it's being chopped off here on the photo, but up the side, it should have said birth rate per thousand per year in 2009. Along the bottom we can see here GNI per capita. And this scattergraph shows that there's a clear correlation between the two development indicators. Although there are a few anomalies. Now an anomaly is a figure that does not fit in with a pattern. For example, Romania here has a low birth rate than expected given its low GNI. So it has a very low GNI, it's low down on this scale, but it's also low on the birth rate scale. Whereas what we tend to find, the higher the birth rate, the lower the GNI, and the lower the birth rate, the higher the GNI. Now hopefully what you are realising is that to look at development and the development of a country, you need to look at a range of development measures because using one single measure is inaccurate. We talked about just looking at wealth. Well, some people in that country are wealthy, some people aren't, and it's an average of that country. Birth rate is an excellent measure of development. In rich industrialising countries, women achieve high levels of education and career prospects. As it is difficult to pursue a high-flying career and bring up several children, having children is often sacrificed for success in the work and world. Some countries, such as France, remember when we did the population, have tried to encourage career women to have children using tax advances and benefits. Death rate is a poor indicator of development. As we looked at that table, almost all countries now have low death rates. The more economically developed con the country, the higher uh, is the death rate. This is because improved health care allows most people to live longer. With more elderly people, the death rate will be higher. GNP, GNI, um, per capita only economic measures, so give no clear indication of people's personal living standards. They do not tell us what people earn or how much that buys, nor do they touch directly on how educated people are and the cultural quality of their lives. So all indicators of development are averages across the country. Within any society, there's going to be extremes of wealth and opportunity, which a single figure actually hides and these are the things we need to talk about when we're talking about the limitations so multiple variable indicators are maybe better combining several indicators gives a better view of a country's economic and social status so something called physical quality of life index uses literacy rate life expectancy and infant mortality to provide an index of social well-being and quality of life the Human Development Index, which we've looked at and is the one that we're probably going to continue looking at and come up most often, is the most commonly used indicator of overall development. It uses life expectancy, literacy and incomes to calculate an index value between 1 and 0, 1 being exceptionally developed, 0 being uh, less developed.